Greetings and good day. This is Christopher Priest here again at Freeze Forge. Today we're going to take a look at annealing. A special thanks to Brent Greer. He requested that I do a video on annealing, and this is a topic of which I have been wanting to do a video on for some time now, uh, but just never really had the uh, motivation to go out and actually do it. So thank you, Brent. Uh, hopefully this show will prove informative for you, and for me, and for everyone else watching. It's a little experiment that I haven't seen done elsewhere, and I'm curious just to see what the results are. Now he's asked me to do a video on annealing. Now, full disclosure, I am by no means an expert. I am not an authority in any way, shape, or form. I take information that I get from other people, and I try to use that to the best of my ability. But I'm I'm not a professional, and this is a hobby for me, so take everything I say with a big grain of salt and investigate for yourselves to ensure that it is accurate and true. Okay, disclaimer out of the way. What is annealing? Annealing in metallurgy and metal science is a heat treatment that alters the physical and sometimes chemical properties of a material to increase its ductility and reduce its hardness. This is the thing that we're most after reducing its hardness because it makes it more workable. Long story short, we take some metal, we heat it up to a non-magnetic, we hold it there for a little bit, and then we cool it. There are a few different ways you can tackle this. One of those ways is you can go out and get yourself a really fancy dancy heat treating oven that will heat it up to a certain temperature, whatever temperature you set, and hold it there for a particular amount of time, and then lower it and hold it there for a particular amount of time, and so on and so forth, in order to properly anneal the material based on the specifications of that metal, because every different metal has different heat and cool temperatures and time requirements in order to anneal it to its fullest capabilities, to its fullest extent. I don't have a heat treating oven, but that's not the only way to skin this cat. So, what I have here is a file. Uh, the end broke off, so I've been wanting to make a knife out of this. And one of the ways I want to make a knife is through stock removal, but have you ever tried using stock removal on hardened metal? It's not going to work so well, so we need to anneal it first. Now, it's a hard file on a hard file. Uh, it doesn't do anything. But remember this, because after we anneal it, we're going to try it again, and we're going to see what works best. So I've got some vermiculite. This is basically what's recommended for annealing uh, for people who don't have a heat treat oven because the heat treating oven is definitely the, the recommended thing. But vermiculite or perlite, basically the same thing from what I've been told. And that. And there's also a far more common thing that people have kicking about, and that is just simple wood ash from the fireplace. I have had good success with wood ash, but I'm curious as to what is going to work more effectively, wood ash or vermiculite. So that's exactly the experiment that we're going to conduct here today. So we need a suitable container for our wood ash and our vermiculite. Uh, I keep my wood ash just in a plastic container because that's what I emptied my fireplace out into when I had a fireplace. Uh, but this is not a suitable container for annealing. Uh, we're putting really hot metal in there, and uh, it'll probably just melt. This, however, works very well. This is uh, very simply coffee cans. I've got two coffee cans taped together, cut out in the middle. Uh, I've made this one already, and this is the one that I used in order to anneal my Yari. Worked very well. So I was very happy with that, very pleased with that. I need to make a separate one for the vermiculite, and that is exactly what I'm going to do now. Real simple. Come on. Hmm. Huh. Well, 
Ale. God, these tin steps are horrible. that precise measurements. And there's two. One thing I notice right off the rattle is the vermiculite is far cleaner than the ash. So, let's keep to the same file here. Oh yeah, bites right in. So we need Two different two points that are the same that we can file test on these. Taking our file, this is no pressure. No pressure. Heavy pressure. And again, heavy pressure. So what do we have here? Which one has worked the best? I suppose we could try a chisel. Well, that definitely makes a mark. Same strength blow. Interesting. So, what do we have? What is the result of our experiment? Well, my experiment, as I mentioned initially, may be a little bit askew as the pieces are, well, this one is double the size of that. So, that might be throwing off the results of my experiment a tad. This one is certainly softer. I say this because the file mark, the heavy file mark, is definitely bigger on this one, deeper than this one. 
The chisel mark on the vermiculite is also, with the same strength flow, bigger. Now, this of course isn't scientifically accurate. There is human error at play, the sizes are different, but I could also tell on the grinder while I was smoothing things up for testing that the vermiculite, the material from the steel that was annealed in the vermiculite was easier to remove. That was not easy to say. And it comes out cleaner. So that's definitely big points for vermiculite over the wood ash. The wood ash, it definitely works. The vermiculite also definitely works. And I think just, this is just me, but I'm going, going forward, I'm going to be using the vermiculite as opposed to the wood ash. I hope you found this video interesting or informative, or at the very least, a good use of your time. Thank you all very much for watching. May the force serve you well. Well, you're still here. It's over. Go home. I guess since you won't go away, I'll take this moment to thank my fantastic and wonderful patrons. You guys are amazing. Thank you very much. I love you a long time. Over here, you'll find a couple of videos I've done. This one is my most recent upload, and this one is one that YouTube has decided via its algorithms that you might enjoy. We all know how wonderful and fantastic and perfect YouTube's algorithms are, so I'm sure you have nothing to fear.